This is the third Tuesday of the month Wapaka City Council meeting. Welcome everybody to our regular scheduled City Council meeting. Today is June 20th, 2017 and it is 6.02 p.m. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and place the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'll ask uh, Sandy to read the clerk's open meeting statement for us. This meeting and all meetings of the Common Council are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the press in accordance with Wisconsin state statutes, so the citizens may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. And roll call, please. Brian Smith. Here. Steve Hackett. Here. Lori Chestnut. Here. Paul Hagan. Alan Keeland. Here. Scott Pachatsky. Here. Dave Peterson. Here. Paul Mayo. Here. Chuck Whitman. Here. Mary Fair. Here. And Eric Olson. Here. Nine present. We have a quorum. Uh, consent agenda is the next item on uh, in your packet. Uh, these are for items that we take with one motion and we vote on that one motion. Unless there's any items that are in the consent agenda that council would like to see a council member or a staff member or the public for that matter would like to see moved uh, from the consent agenda to the regular agenda where then we would vote on them uh, separately. Uh, hearing none, uh, as far as uh, moving anything from the consent agenda to the regular agenda, I would uh, ask for an approval of that. So moved. Second. Motion by Hackett, second by uh, Chestnut that we approve the consent agenda as printed. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Uh, next we have the regular agenda and Sandy, you have one item? I do. Under number, under new business letter D, additional information was uploaded to the city website and also emailed today. Thanks. So that's one item. Uh, all the rest of it is as printed. We're not asking for any changes in order. Uh, so we'll just uh, move forward with that. So we would need a motion to approve. So moved. Uh, motion by Whitman, second by Peterson, Dave Peterson, that we approve the regular agenda. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against, motion carried. Uh, Non-agenda items and, and announcements. Uh, first is uh, we have uh, no announcements for tonight. Uh, we have public input. Uh, this is for uh, anybody in the audience, staff, or council members to speak to the council uh, about a non-agenda item, anything that uh, they feel is important that uh, that uh, council should know about. Um, this is your time to talk. Uh, we ask that you give your name uh, for the record and limit your time to uh, three minutes or less. I know Lori yes. wanted to say something. So. I did want to say something. Thank you. So um, on behalf of all the people who can't be here, and I know that we had an amazing storm, um, everybody is thrilled with law enforcement, fire department, all the all the city crews on the streets um it it looked amazing in a very short period of time the main drags and everything how how well it's being cleaned up and you guys um i'm just very proud of how all you all work together and what you do for our people because they certainly appreciate it if they can't be down here saying thanks or can't catch on the street thanks from them and then for the parks and rec department I spend a lot of time out at um, Swan Park and I want to say thank you for it's always so nice to be there and um, so organized and so clean and, and kept up. You do a great job for the kids. Thank you. Pass on to our crews. Thank, you. thank you. Anything else uh, under public input? 
Thank you, Lori, for that. Uh, I, I couldn't say it any better than that. That's, they did do a great job, both. Uh, hearing none, now we'll move on to department announcements and reports. And as always, we'll start with Kathy, our finance director, treasurer. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council members. Um, my report is in the packet, and I don't add to it because of the length of the agenda. They can read it in the packet. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, next, we have uh, Peg, our library director. Thank you, Mayor Smith. And good evening, everyone. Um, we are very excited this summer. We have our summer learning program going on, and I have distributed some brochures for you. Um, this week, we're starting a, an adult documentary series. Tonight is Farmland. Tomorrow night is Girl Rising, and then the, the following night is Being Mortal. So they're all documentary films with discussions afterwards. I hope you'll try and join us. They start about the same time as this meeting starts. Um, and then there are so many things going on in each department. I, I can't even highlight some of the great things, but we still have the reading, the, the therapy dogs where the kids can come in and read. Um, our exhibit room has turned into a library where every day there's a science or a math or a problem solving activity for the kids. Um, there's always something fun going on in the teen room. We're um, making prosthetic hands for people who don't have hands with our 3D printer. There are just some really exciting things. I hope you'll visit our website and see all the great things that are going on at the library. And when we did have that storm, the number of people who needed internet, um, they were very grateful that they were able to come into our cool library and gain access that way. It was air conditioning too. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, next, uh, we have Brennan, our uh, development director. Brennan. Thank you, Mayor. And members of Council, my reports on page 46. Most of the items have some uh, approval process tonight, but I just do want to highlight two things. One, uh, I do have a new intern within the department. Uh, her name is Olivia Stor Storinsky. Um, she will be a junior this fall at UW Stevens Point, so we'll actually have her for an extended period of time uh, over the next year to two years. Um, the internship program is a requirement through UW Stevens Point, but um, since Olivia has taken the initiative to start early, uh, this will provide an opportunity to have some uh, consistency within the department for an internship. So we're definitely looking forward to that. Um, and then just uh, an update to, to the Common Council. We have started the internal design review team meetings with Kathy, myself, uh, Henry, and Justin. And uh, so far, so uh, so far, so good with uh, those meetings. and. Um, and the projects that we're working on right now, one of them being the live work, which uh, will be going back to Planning Commission next month. So overall, I think the process is going well, and we have met with some developers who I think have appreciated the open for business and streamlined process. So, Great. Awesome. Brennan, thank you. Justin, Public Works. Thank you, Mayor. My uh, report can be seen on page 48 and 49 uh, within the packet, uh, starting with the sewer uh, treatment plant division, uh, our cathodic protection project, which I've talked about a lot. Uh, uh, end of July, we should be having some of the work being done. Uh, just had word on that just the other day. But we're still having some issues with our SCADA system. Uh, the new antenna, we tried, did improve things, but we found out that it has not solved it all. So we're still looking into the remote locations, such as the wells and lift stations, uh, and actually looking at the electrical with inside them, being that many of them are very old. <clears throat> street side, the uh, big thing other than the storm was Lake Street uh, finally pinned down a start date with the contractor. We're going to be starting after the triathlon, so starting uh, August 21st, enrolling by then. And with the schedule that they provided, they should have it complete uh, by the time <laughs> October rolls around. Now, that's granted uh, not finding any surprises underground and having good weather. Um, either way, we're thinking that if we do end up going into October, uh, we should still be fine. Uh, the big caveat with that is that it allows us enough time to uh, work with the DNR, uh, secure that funding, as that is announced uh, early August. Last year, they published their list. It was August 9th. So that would give <laughs> us enough time to secure that funding, get that second contractor on board, and get them out there uh, mid-September to work on that stuff. Uh, before the storm hit, we were working on quite a few number of things. Uh, sidewalk grinding was a big thing. You know, we have them little trip points, try to get those milled down. Uh, and now with the, the storm, of course, we've been working on the brush removal cleanup, down trees. Um, 
I understand there was a little bit of a, a misunderstanding as what the city crews were doing. We opened up the recycling center on an emergency basis to take the brush for free. Our crews will still be picking up the branches that are on the boulevard. I guess we did not publish that we would be doing it, but we didn't publish that we wouldn't be doing it. I think people took it as we weren't going to do it. So we are still going to do it. Um, so just get the word out there that, that we are, but it's a long process because there's been a lot of trees that went down. Uh, water side, the big thing is we did get some response from the King water study, uh, mainly the, the water quality report, and just two thumbs up on that, and that mainly focused on well seven and eight in our high zone, um, but we're still waiting on the final uh, published report from the engineering firm. Uh, when that happens, we're planning on setting up another meeting uh, and talking over with the state and this engineering firm. Facility, not very exciting, uh, rather than just routine stuff, except for Russ pretty much fixed or changed out almost every single toilet in the whole city, it seems like last month, so that's all that happened there. <laughs> Steve, you got anything funny to say about that? Because well, I, I don't. <laughs> I was thinking about it, but I... <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate that. Uh, Aaron. Parks and Rec. Thank you, Mayor Smith. Uh, my report's on page 22 of your packet. Uh, touch on the storm cleanup right away. Want to thank our crews. Want to thank the street worker, uh, street department for helping out in the parks as well. A uh, number of trees down. Really no damage to facilities other than a fence got, um, a bunch of trees fell on it in Pullman Park, so we'll be making an insurance claim on that. Um, you guys probably saw an article on the front page of the paper last week about zebra mussels uh, at the beach. Uh, this is something we talked about when we first learned that they were, gonna, that they were in uh, Shadow Lake. Um, and we have had a couple incidents where people have cut their feet. We are recommending that people wear uh, water shoes or aqua socks. Um, it's not a requirement. Um, and I don't want to, by any means, uh, make people feel like they're all over out there, that it's that it's you're bound to cut your feet but we're recommending it at this point um, we also have rakes our lifeguards are trying to keep it under control there at the beach so just to make everyone aware um, maybe some of you saw channel 5 had a little story on uh, the senior center and their project down in serenity park uh, met with justin as well as casey byersdorf from the county uh, and steve lawrence from the county uh, and they are working on getting approval through their uh, board to allow us to paint a mural. Um, it's going to depict some historic um, drawings or paintings of Wapaka, the Wapaka area, on the retaining wall facing the park on the State Street Bridge down there. Uh, they're going to work with some local artists as well as maybe get some students involved in the fall. Uh, tournament, we're right in the middle of tournament season. Uh, we just had one last weekend. We have another one this weekend. And then our rec tournament is the following week. We've been pretty lucky with rain. I hope that can continue. Um, school board, uh, the Fund 80 conversation, uh, emailed Greg back and forth uh, a day or so ago, and I am set to give a, that presentation to the Finance <coughs> Committee, which is at the end of July. It sounds like they are like us and putting off that July meeting around the 4th, so uh, probably plan to go to a regular school board meeting in August for that. Our budget, uh, I know... Kathy recently gave the audit numbers, so I just wanted to report on that. Our budget for 2016, uh, we were at 90.87% um, of what we had budgeted. A lot of that savings was because of our cemetery position being filled only partial, uh, partially throughout the year. And our revenues were at 119% of what was budgeted. So everything looked okay there. Um, and then I just also wanted to report on rec soccer. We kind of take, we have taken our last of the registrations um, our non-residents are down about 60 percent we had uh, in 2016 we had 44 uh, non-residents and this year we have 17 so that just gives you uh, some idea of, of where we're at with that but otherwise i have nothing else to report thank you Aaron. thank you appreciate that any questions on that uh, okay good chief ozell Thank you, Mayor. My report can be found on page 28. The police department at, at this time has been, has started the conversation with other departments in the, in the county. We're looking at start, starting to carry Narcan inside our squads. 
Um, over the past year so far, in, a, in the first six months, we've had 12 overdoses that we've responded to. And back in 2016, we only responded to five. So we've more than doubled what we've responded to for the overdoses. The other reason um, that we're doing this is the potency of what the officers are coming into contact with. And there have been instances where officers have um, been field testing the, the evidence and because of powder or something that was airborne or got onto their skin, they actually started overdosing from the product that they were testing. And some of this stuff is 10,000 times stronger than what the actual heroin is. So we're in a development process right now of making some um, policy changes as to how we're handling that. We're also looking at um, working with Gold Cross as to maybe find uh, working with them to get a contract as to getting the Narcan through them. So we're just in the development stages of that. <coughs> Um, the other thing that we are working on, I've been working on with Kathy and have talked with Henry about is there is a COPS grant that is available um, for the next three years for 75% funding of um, benefits, wages up to $125,000 for the three years for an entry level position. So um, the commission has been aware and they've approved uh, to go forward to write the grant and what that would be for is we've always talked about having that drug officer and um, we'd have to rehire position at entry level. And um, so we've been working on the numbers and that is due in the middle of July. Um, so we are working on that. And then the last thing that I'll touch on is um, Brett Rodens um, was with us nine years um, a few weeks ago. So everything else in our in the packet is informational. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Josh, Mr. IT. Um, lots of odds and ends projects going on. Finished getting out new computers that are being replaced this year and rotating some other ones around. Um, we taped our third episode of our in-studio music program, Wapaka Local Live. This past taping, we had Irene's Garden. Um, so that's going to be on the air for the next several weeks. I've been spending some time doing some research on some projects that we're looking at for next year. Um, Aaron and Brian and I did a walk through the rec center looking at cameras and looking at things for the key fob system that we'll be putting in next year. And then I've been doing some research on some upgrades for this room. And then um, we'll pack online. Lots of activity going on there. Some of that we'll be talking about a little bit later tonight with a potential project. But Henry, Ralph, and I have been spending time meeting with uh, a couple of people over at the county government uh, about some expansion uh, possibilities and some needs throughout the county. And then with the storms last week, we had uh, two towers that we have equipment located on collapsed. One tower we own, and that's located on private property. And the homeowner has been very good to work with. I'm told the new tower is up. Um, worked really quick and had a little bit of luck to get someone to install a brand new tower for us. That one affects eight customers who will be back online tomorrow. And the other tower is a privately owned tower at Silver Mist. And what we're hearing through the grapevine, the owner who's very busy because of the storm, will hopefully have that one replaced next year. And that's about seven customers that are offline. So um, we got hit pretty bad. We've got some other more minor damage that we're working on cleaning up yet on the network as a result of the storm, and that's about all I've got. Thank you, Josh. I know, Josh, we're, t again, we, we complimented uh, Justin and Aaron and the police department, of course, uh, but uh, Josh worked very hard, too, to get Wolpaca Online back up and running, too, uh, with the towers that were down, and <coughs> appreciate that. Uh, I, I heard very few, if any, customer complaints, so you must have done a great job there. Yes. Um, I just also want to thank Josh. Um, the, the night we had those storms, we actually had a fire call at the police department. One of the coils burnt up. And um, Josh did come down to the police department to make sure that all our office equipment and everything, so we didn't have any power surges and have anything wrecked. So he spent a few hours down there with us until we were able to get back up and 
made sure everything was safe, so we didn't wreck any equipment. So I appreciate what he did. Printer. Yeah, we, I think we lost one printer. <laughs> so that was pretty good, I thought. Awesome. Yeah, great. Thank you. Ed Murray, uh, City Administrator Clark. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, my report's on... Uh, Begins on page 53. I'm going to echo a little bit of Brennan's uh, report. Uh, the Development Review uh, Committee team has been getting together, and uh, I think it's working very well. Um, and I uh, think it's a great improvement. Um, they are continuing to work on our arts and culture planning. There is a steering committee meeting on July 11th. Again, our, our goal is to get something out uh, before the end of the summer or right after Labor Day. Uh, it's budget time uh, already, um, and I've spoken with Mayor Smith and the other department heads. We're going to uh, begin with, uh, much like we did last year, if you remember, we had kind of four work sessions, and the first one was on kind of TIF. So we would like to do that again uh, with uh, the council, um, and we're looking to do that July 18th at the July council meeting kind of just give you a review and get your uh, reaction to kind of where we're at with the TIF. And I think we're going to have some uh, requests for some uh, support for some actions in 2018 as far as TIF goes. And then finally been working with the chamber and the retail group, Downtown King and in between. And there are a couple action items for a event on July 28th that uh, will be coming up here shortly under new business. Thanks, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Henry. Uh, let's move uh, on to unfinished business. Uh, the first one up is Justin uh, dealing with the back in angle parking on Union Street. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have a memo on page 130. Uh, behind that is a map overview of the area that I'll be talking about just to kind of jog your memories. Uh, and then finally, a copy of um, the memo, cover memo from the DOT regarding our exceptions request, which is the reason why this is being brought forward. Uh, as Brennan has mentioned in the past, the DOT has granted our uh, request for uh, the parking exception on Main Street. Uh, the angle front end uh, is not up to their standards. However, we, grant, we were asked for an uh, exception to that, and they granted that us or to us. Now, about a year ago, we started this back end pilot uh, in the case that they would not grant the exception, uh, thinking that this was a good alternative uh, to uh, parallel parking because it would keep the number of stalls. Uh, and in many ways, it's supposed to be kind of a better parking situation than what we currently have, uh, mainly safety reasons. Um, so we conducted the study, we put a survey out there. You know, and the results were mixed. Uh, I, I won't go over all the details, but, you know, between the survey, uh, word of mouth and Facebook, you know, people talk different ways. Um, but I think, you know, with, with the study or the, the location being right next to our office, we could see every day how it was going. And, and some days were really good. Everyone backed right in just the way they should. We're perfect. Other days were really bad. We had people wrong way. Uh, parks crooked, you know, you could tell people were confused, angry. Uh, so it was a mixed bag. But I think in the long run, it was a very good study because we gained a lot of information from it. So uh, I would say it was successful uh, in realizing that, you know, if we had to use it, I think we could on Main Street. Um, but with the response we got and the exceptions we got, at this point, I'm not going to recommend moving forward uh, with back and angled well, on Union Street. Uh, maybe in the future, we'll, we'll consider it at different locations. Um, however, you know, this trial, I think, needs to come to an end, and, and we should put it back to, to the way it was. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'll take them now. So, again, uh, whatever your thoughts are on whether you agree with the, the concept of back-in parking or straight-in angle parking, it unless you decided to keep it, it, it really does not make sense to keep it any longer uh, because as Brennan has, has let us know and Justin just told us, uh, our exception to allow us to, to do angle parking uh, when we do the, the Main Street project is in place, so we'll be able to keep the angle parking if we want to. So, uh, again, I, I guess I concur with uh, Justin, although I like the back-end parking, uh, I concur that... Uh, 
if we're only going to leave it at that one place, it probably makes more sense to just move everything back to regular uh, front end angle parking. Uh, so if you are in agreement with that or not in agreement with that, uh, we would need a motion one way or the other to uh, allow uh, Justin and his crew to be able to uh, uh, take care of that. I would move that we allow Justin to move ahead with removing that. Okay. Second. We have a motion by Justin, second by Hackett, that uh, we move forward with uh, ending the back end pilot trial and uh, remark uh, East Union Street uh, so that it is front and angle parking. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? <clears throat> Motion carried. Uh, second reading of ordinance number 0107. This is an ordinance to establish procedures and criteria for allowing alternative forms of sworn testimony at the Board of Review hearings. I don't know, is this you, Henry, or? Yes, or, sir. Okay. Yeah, it's, this is a, an administrative uh, uh, request. Uh, the state law was changed. I've learned of it through some mandatory uh, Board of Review training, uh, and this was a template provided by uh, Department of Revenue. I uh, explained it a little bit last time, but it, it, it just puts, uh, in, it codifies, uh, um, the ability for people to um, provide sworn statements uh, without having to be present. There are some prerequisites that they have to do to qualify for that and you know, have to file a notice of appeal and everything. But again, it's this is administrative and just uh, 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 mirrors the state law. Okay, and this yeah. is the second reading of this. So if you did not hear of any issues or you did not have any issues uh, since the reading of the first reading uh, we should be okay to to go forward and approve this so moved. second motion by Hackett uh, second by Chestnut that we approve of ordinance number 0107 and this is the second reading any discussion uh, since it is an ordinance uh, it's, we will need a roll call vote Sandy Lori Chestnut? Aye. Chuck Whitman? Aye. Paul Neal? Aye. Eric Wilson? Aye. Steve Hackett? Aye. Dave Peterson? Aye. Mary Fair? Aye. Scott Prochatsky? Aye. And Alan Keeland? Aye. Nine ayes, motion carried. All right. Thanks, Henry. Uh, next, we have. Uh, Deer Management Committee update, and uh, Ellen. Yes, um, if you read Henry's report, you saw that he did allude to some of the stuff that uh, we've been working on. <clears throat> but um, we've had a second meeting since council approval to uh, develop and refine the hunting rules to uh, create a job description for the hunt coordinator. Um, we will be advertising the coordinator position as a volunteer position initially, and uh, depending on the response we get to it, we may have to be looking at uh, creating a stipend of some sort to, uh, to get that uh, coordinator in place. Um, we'll know more about that, of course, down the road, but we may have to be looking at this as a budget item uh, for 2018. Um, I will be participating in two radio interviews in June and July to explain the program, and additional information will be included in the um, insert of the water bill, as well as uh, some additional information in the County Post West. And we will be applying for the agricultural permit with the DNR in the near future. Great. Alan, thanks for that update. Anybody have any questions of uh, what's going on? All right. I do. Um, yeah, go ahead. So if we have uh, someone volunteer, will the city pay for the equipment needed? The um, there will be some reimbursements necessary for, um, for materials and so on. But we were hopeful that this could be a self-funding self program, uh, either through licensing fees or uh, something like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
Anybody else? All right. Thanks, Alan. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Uh, moving on to new business, we have a request from uh, Katie Landers uh, for average dough vendor to hold craft sales on uh, city property. Aaron, you brought this forward. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Smith. Um, so I've been talking with uh, Miss Landers and Miss Stowe for quite some time. Uh, they did used to run a vendor show at the Wapaka Bowl. Um, wanted to move it to South Park for the summer, so they have been in Lower South Park for a couple of times, uh, running a show there and providing that as an opportunity uh, for the community. Um, we did have, they were a little late to the game, so we had some um, rentals that were already booked for the months of August, September, and October, which is why this request is coming forward. Uh, they did have an interest in using around City Hall, uh, which we eventually determined uh, East Fulton Street would be the best site for that. Um, and they are looking to host their monthly event there on August 12th, September 9th, and October 14th, which ends up being the second Saturdays uh, of each of those months. Um, we would close the street for that. Um, we have spoke with, or I have spoke with, Roger, and he did not think that would be a problem. Also talked to Dominic and touched base with Peg a little bit. As far as the library goes, we would close the street, but um, leave it open from the parking lot to Jefferson Street, so there'd be pull through traffic and that would not be an issue. Uh, did also speak with Bridget Furquette from the farmer's market just to get their thoughts. The idea is, is to not, um, to allow them to have their spots as they always do, um, and they were all for it just because of the extra traffic and things that would be around uh, for them as well. Um, we would, it would be my recommendation uh, to charge uh, the fee that we are charging uh, at South, or as a park rental. Um, it's what they're used to paying. It, it is a for-profit group. Uh, so just to keep things, I guess, uh, consistent, that's just part of, part of the recommendation. Um, so with that, uh, I can answer any questions. Otherwise, I'm sure Ms. Landers and Ms. Tho would be available for that as well. Okay, so the, the I'll, start, <coughs> I'll start with the questions here. So the $80 per day is a total, total for, if they have one vendor or 25 vendors, it's 80 bucks. Correct. Okay, so there's gonna be either Ms. Landers or Ms. Tho or both of them will be the one in charge and they'll make sure that that gets paid. Correct. Okay. Um, and then also, if, um, <coughs> can I ask one of you or both of you to stand up and just <coughs> right by the microphone nose here so we can hear you? Uh, just give your name. <coughs> I'm Katie Landers. And Missy Ethel. Okay. Thank you. How many vendors do you have you had in the past and how many do you expect to have? On average, it's between 15 to 30, depending on the month and who's available, how many people sign up. So last Saturday, we had 28 down at South Park. Okay. And you guys, um, just from a state standpoint, uh, do you have one seller's permit, or does each vendor have their own seller's permit? Each vendor is required to have their own seller's permit. We're also required to report within 10 days after every show to the Department of Revenue, who was at our shows, all their information, if they have a tax ID number, all that kind of stuff. So okay. we also have our own permit for our company as the event coordinators, as well as a federal ID. Okay. So. And as a individual over the age of 60, are you, are you gonna have bathroom facilities there too? We can provide for them, we can rent. Okay. I mean, do you have any other options? No. I mean, if, that, if we were going to hold it here in East Fulton, then we would look into um, for August, September, and October renting the, you know, porta potties or whatever for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Dave, I have two questions. Uh, I guess first one for well, both Aaron and you. If you expect 15 to 30 booths, how is that going to fit in that spot? If you're going to leave it open from the library back over to Jefferson Street, really get that many in that? Are they really small booths or ten by tents? ten? <laughs> it's a ten by ten spot. And we actually went out there and walked it out and pasted it out. We also have one of those little, I don't know what's called, a little walking stick, and it marks out the feet as you go along. And we could fit, I don't know how many people it was back, back to back, depending on how far up we started. We were going to put them back to back, so it would be like a 
at the middle big of the rectangle in the middle of the street. So yeah, I think it was we could get our thirty in there without a problem. Okay, at a ten by ten spot. All his, his meat wagon there, pretty far back towards the. So, the well, we would be not up against them, closer to like the other, like the Firefly T Dub side of the of the street. So there'd be room in between us and the other, you know, farmers market vendor that always sets up on that corner there. Second question, more for Aaron at eighty dollars or whatever the charge is. Does that go to Park and Rec or does that go to the city? I would go. I would anticipate it going to the city. It would not be like a park rental. It'd be more like a general fund fee. I guess it's not something we talked about. Uh, this is just a process I'm helping them through because they were in a park. Now this is on city hall grounds. So I'm, I think that's where it should go too. If it's city. sure. You sure you don't want to have it go to the park? I like the park and <laughs> Just tell us who to make the checkout to. That's. Hey, go ahead. Um, what would the time be for the for the event? We run our shows from ten to three, and vendors start showing up. We let them. Some of them have a more extensive setup. We let them start setting up at eight o'clock in the morning, and most of them, it takes longer to set up than tear down. We're normally cleaned up and gone by four, ish. So library is open from ten till two, um, but <coughs> last hour there would be without that. That's why we were saying that we would rent. You know portable facilities so that way people wouldn't be you know running in and out of the the library because the hours aren't you know so um i have a question okay. i'm curious about the name of your company how how did that originate when we first started the company we our first show we did was last year in november for the big like deer hunter's widow weekend um, and our first show we actually rented the middle school and we were trying to come up with something clever it was actually her husband's idea and it just stuck so instead of average joe it was average doe because so it was deer hunter's widow deer hunting, yeah okay. <laughs> anybody else any questions i gotta tell you in in by no means do i think that uh I mean, it, the $80 uh, maybe works for this year, but I think we really need to look at a policy uh, because we're talking 30 vendors that are there to make a profit, and they're going to pay a $2.67 to rent a space of 10 by 10. I think I pay a little bit more to have my office building uh, to generate income in the downtown area than and they're paying for a day's worth of work. So I, I think uh, we we need to look at setting up a policy that uh, uh, at least gets a, a, a reasonable fee for them to be able to use the, the city property. Okay? Uh, I'm not asking for that for this year, but I'm thinking that that's something that we should be looking at for the future. Mayor, how much are the the permits? If each of a, each vendor has to have a permit, does does that have anything to do with us? Is that an or? No, that's a state. That's a state. Se okay. Permit. I think they pay what twenty dollars a year for yeah, that. Yeah, I don't think it's yearly. I think it's yeah. to every two years they pay twenty dollars for a yeah. seller's permit. Okay. Yeah. So there's nothing. It's pretty there. reasonable. Yeah. 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 Are you uh, planning on holding this? Like next year on Fulton Street, or you we were gonna, gonna we to were gonna talk to you about that, like May through October through next year to do them all outside. Um, if I honestly think that this, look, it, you know, everything's about location and Main Street at the same time the farmers market is going on, you know, bringing more people into the downtown area, you know, not only to come to our, you know, event, but while they're here, they're gonna shop all the other, you know, stores downtown, you know, big tourist time in the summer, you know, so. But we were hoping that. Not only the last three months that we need, you know, location to the show that we could also do it May through October of next year. So, at the same location. And you're going to bring that request back when? When would you like us to? If I can speak on that. Yeah. Um, I did send them this information just so they could look it over, and then they did send me an email back stating that they were looking at doing that. And I just suggested, well, let's get through these months. Mm -hmm. um, see how it goes, and then we'll bring it back in the winter, and then maybe we, at that by that point, we'll have figured something out with your request as well. Sure. Um, Chuck, did that answer your yep. question? I just, you know, because they said they had 
people booked at the park already and so they weren't going to go if next year you're going to try to book the park or were you going to try to have it on Fulton Street again? I think we're going to have better attend. I mean, we've had much better attendance at South Park versus when we were at our previous location. I mean, the attendance has more than doubled. We just drive by people coming by and seeing our banner and seeing the tent set up alone. Um, downtown, I think, will even do, you know, better, as far yeah. as, Good. yeah. So Good. just something that, you know, after we did our first couple of shows over here, we could look back and say, okay, we did this many people came through at South Park. Now we're having this many people, you know, come to our event downtown. So, uh, Aaron, just to keep in consideration, we're most likely ripping up that area next year. So, with the reconstruction of the City Hall parking lot and the three roads around it, so we're going to have to find an alternative location. So, just to keep that in consideration for next year as well. Thank you. I was not thinking about that. So, good point. Um, well, and we should be able to have a better timeline of when that's going to happen next year, too. So Correct. And if we knew it. about it, I mean, I didn't know that, that that was something, you know, as far as in the works, as far as construction. Um, if we knew it was like, you know, during these months or whatever that it wasn't, then that's something we could look to Aaron about, you know, in January when they open up rental again for, you know, the park facilities, we could rent the park facilities during, you know, whatever months any of those options would be unavailable to us. So. Okay. I, I need to correct my math a little bit. So if we take 30 and they're going to do it three times, it's actually 90 cents for a rental. And that's, that's we try to stay at around 30, but it's not some months. Some months it's 15 people, sometimes 20. And yeah. Right. So. yeah, it should almost be a per vendor charge, I'm thinking, is what it should be. Uh, that makes more sense. Um, Anything else before we, uh, we don't have a motion yet. Uh, oh, one other thing, and Henry or Sandy, this would be something I would like to know, and maybe council would, with these three events, how many events does this make that East Fulton Street is going to be closed from uh, Memorial Day through, uh, uh, and you don't have to tell me tonight. You can let us know at the next meeting. In 2017, how many dates are we going to have East Fulton Street closed? Be interested to know. Okay, anybody would like to make a motion? I'll make that into a motion, Mayor. Uh, motion I'll second. Grant this. Okay. I'm sorry. Motion by Whitman, second by Chestnut, that we approve of the request uh, for the average dough <laughs> vendors to hold craft sales on city property, closing the portion of East Fulton Street on August 12th, September 9th, October 14th. And uh, they're requesting from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. with a fee of $80 per day. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Good luck to you. Thank and you. Who's our are you going to be the contact, Aaron? Yeah. That? Yeah. Okay. Do you, I guess I didn't ask this either. I'm, I'm guessing. Do you require electricity? No. Okay. And if any of our vendors do need electricity, well, I guess they're just not going to have okay. any. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Okay. Great. Thank you Thank very you. much. All right. Uh, so we move from one party to another here. We got... Uh, the Wapaka Summer Block Party, Henry and Brennan. I'm going to defer to Brennan because he's got the cover memo. Uh, and then Terry's in the audience. Um, so she, she's got an action request here, too. So you want to lead us, Brennan? Sure. Please. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor, uh, members of council. The item uh, starts on page 137. Um, this is the third year that um, in working with the, the Chamber and the Wapaki King in between of trying to get some additional events into the downtown area. Uh, we started this three years ago um, when we initially first started looking at um, the reconstruction of Main Street, trying to get some you know events started um, so that when reconstruction did occur, um, there would still be some opportunities to bring people into, into the downtown area and help the businesses and everything else. Um, over the last couple of years, we've uh, we've done a sputter open, 
Um, and then last year we did a, a, a new event with the summer games, which was kind of a community picnic. And then we also had, um, we, we were still working with the, the high school a little bit on kind of a homecoming event for two years. Um, at the end of last year, we kind of looked at uh, the three events and uh, what value they were bringing and decided that moving forward, um, we wanted to create one new event um, for this year and kind of combine a couple of the different events together. So what we are proposing is doing a uh, Wapaka Summer Block Party down in Rotary Riverview Park. Uh, this event would be on July 28th. It would be a Friday from 12 uh, until about 11 o'clock at night. Um, merging a couple of the events together, so from about 12 to 3 would be kind of the family picnic time um, where we would provide uh, hot dogs and uh, um, chips and water, lemonade, um, and kind of have a, a kid zone area down in River, River, Riverview Park. Uh, my map is on page 138 just to kind of take a look at it. Uh, the event would also have, um, we're kind of doing like a, a, a music, a little music festival utilizing the the band shelter that's down there, been working with Josh and his team as well uh, to get some bands lined up. Henry has uh, been working on that as well, along with Mitch. Um, and I think we're upwards of six to eight bands, I think, confirmed for the event right now. And that would start at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and go to about 11 o'clock at night. Um, uh, the, ra the, the city's radio station would be, able to, would be doing some of the emceeing for that day and also providing music during the picnic time. Uh, we are looking to install the the sputter open uh, the the mini golf course down on Cooper Street. We will not be drilling into the street for the holes this year, so um, we're working through that process right now. But we're also looking to include a, a bounty house uh, area. Um, we're also uh, we're working with the library and creating kind of a kid fun zone. They're going to bring their <coughs> fab lab and their 3D printing down there, along with some other activities uh, for the event. Uh, so what, there's a couple of requests that we are seeking this evening. Uh, there's one other piece I wanted to uh, identify is um, Aaron has been able to secure four or five different food trucks for the event as well. So we'll be able to provide um, alternative uh, food options throughout the day. As part of this event and why Terry is here this evening as well, um, because this event was moved down to Cooper Street, we wanted to still... Um, work with the, the business owners on Main Street to get people into their shops. Um, earlier this year, the Chamber did a wine walk in January or February, which was, um, appeared to be extremely successful. Um, 80 people? 80 people came for that event. So we were looking actually at uh, doing a craft beer walk for this event as well. Um, right now, I believe we have 12 different businesses that have signed on to serve different craft beers for the event. And then we'll have kind of a beer garden down in Rotary Riverview Park that will serve the craft beers for the event as well um, and provide in soda and everything else for the, the people that come to the festival. The requests that are in your packet for this evening are, one, to close Cooper Street um, so that we can install the golf course and utilize that for the day. Um, on the map, you can see on page 138, right now, Aaron and I have walked down there, and we believe that, you know, everything north of the ramp, we can get majority to all the activities in there. And working with uh, T-Dubs, along with providing some handicap parking for that day, we have ident we still would like to close Cooper Street, uh, but, but provide some handicap parking down there for the event. Uh, and also for people that do uh, come to T-Dubs on a Friday night that may need some assistance. Um, we will be working with the business owners to provide signage up on Union Street and up on Main Street uh, regarding the, that the restaurants are open, but the road is closed. Um, have been working with uh, Chief Hozell and also the fire chief regarding um, what EMS needs and fire needs will be for that evening or how to get in here, along with... Um, security for this event. There will be four checkpoints so that people will not be allowed to take alcohol out of the park area. Um, one of them will be at the ramp, one of them will be at the uh, north end of Cooper Street, and then also at the south end of Cooper Street, and then also there will be one location for the stairway um, that goes up that, for T-Dubs that goes up to Main Street as well. So we will have volunteers manning those areas so, that, that, so alcohol is not um, brought out from that area. So with that, I, I ask if there's any questions. One of our goals of moving it into the park was we 
that's come out in our planning for down downtown re, uh, reconstruction project and just the downtown plan is a real um, real strong asset and uh, you know getting more use of the park was one of our goals of having the event down here and getting people used to being there and feeling comfortable to come down and, and enjoy it so uh, that was one of our motivations to, to move it down and yeah, very similar to um, the wine walk people <coughs> will not be able to have beer in their cup they will have to finish it at the establishment be before they do walk down to the other businesses in Main Street as well so they will not be walking down the street with open intoxicants or anything else what yeah. so um, I, I think it's uh, you know I having another event i think it's awesome quite honestly I, I just need to as a business owner i need to get some clarification here i um so what you're saying is is that there will be no parking on cooper street from thursday at 10 o'clock at night until midnight on friday so people that have parking passes or people that don't even have parking passes but park on private property are not going to be ticketed if they park on Main Street? That is one of the things that I, I failed to mention in my, um, in working with the police department, we are, all, we are also looking for a suspension of the two hour parking for this event as well. So, but it's not just two hour parking, there is no parking from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. On, on any city street. So are we, not going to enforce that too. I'm looking at the chief to see what his opinion oh, is. On yeah, this. I I have no problem that enforcing that for the one night. For that one night. Yeah, yes. and Justin, Public Works, have any issues with that? We I mean, would, it's really two nights. It's Thursday and Friday. We will be sending out letters, and we'll encourage the. Um, property owners to park in the city parking lots, but we will also identify that there that there will be a suspension of the parking uh, for those two days. Well, there's probably 50 cars of renters that park down on Cooper Street, so you're going to have 50 cars parked on Main Street, probably. I mean, will they park in the city parking lot? Maybe some, but not many, you know. That most of them will be on Main Street, and then if they sit there all day on Friday, you know, you might have some complaints from some businesses too, because those renters are probably not going to move their cars. You know, so I mean, these these are things that we're going to have to work through. But I'm yep. just I'm just thinking out loud as I'm going through this. Okay. Mayor, so, so are we talking about not enforcing the uh, two hours and the uh, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. on all city streets or just Main Street? Or the, the downtown, so it would be Main Street, it would be in the surrounding area, so I would be looking at probably Jefferson Union and East Fulton Street. Okay, all right, that makes sense. So you don't think they should be able to park at Foxfire Court <laughs> for that day? Um, okay. That hadn't come to mind. No. Okay, <laughs> just just check. <coughs> okay, well, we'll have to make a real conscientious effort to get the the information out to make sure people understand. Uh, up, upon a, pr a hopeful approval this evening, letters will be going out by the end of this week. Okay, so you're requesting. <laughs> Street closures and uh, and the temporary Class B and uh, retailers pick this license for craft beer. Yeah. In or is that are these two separate motions? They most likely. Want, two, I, two, I think I said them. I was thinking two mayor. Okay, so we're just talking street closures yeah. right now. Street closure and the suspension so, of parking. And suspension correct. of parking as one motion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so um, anybody have any questions about uh, the street closures and the suspension of the parking? 
If not, uh, we would need a motion to uh, act on this. I move to. Second. We have a motion by Mayo, second by Olson, that we approve of the closure of Cooper Street um, starting on, oh, let's see, uh, Friday, July 28, 2017, from 6 a.m. until midnight. And no parking uh, Thursday, July 27, 2017, from 10 p.m. until Friday at midnight. Uh, and uh, this would, and we would suspend uh, the two hour parking rules and also the two to six no parking on city streets in a specific area that Brennan's going to get out. Does that sum up what you wanted? Yep. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? <coughs> Motion carried. Okay. I Terry? will leave it to you? Terry for the other one. Yeah. <laughs> hi, Terry. Apologize, but we're having a going away party for our exchange students at Rotary Riverview Park. <laughs> um, so I think basically you know what's going on. Um, I don't know, um, we wanna do a craft beer walk, which is very similar to our wine walk. Um, we're following all the state laws in order to do that. People will have to come to the chamber office, pick up their, um, they'll be wristbanded. We'll actually card them and wristband them um, and give them their mug and the list of locations to um, go to. At each location, they'll get a four ounce sample of beer That'll be measured out. We provide um, measuring cups to all of the retailers that are participating. We actually purchase all of the beer. Um, and then so they drink their sample. Uh, before they leave the business, they do need to have a wash station so they can rinse their um, beer mug out and proceed on to the next location. So there's no open intoxicants on the street. Um, we did the wine walk, had 80 people participate. Did not have any problems at all. Everything went really well. Um, nobody got drunk. I mean, everybody was did well, and um, our retailers were very happy with the event. Brought a lot of people into their businesses and um, people that did make purchases, so it was successful. So we're asking to do this um, in conjunction uh, with the downtown block party. I, I guess I, I didn't ask this, and I'm not sure that I saw this, but. Do you charge for that craft beer on the walk, or is that they have free? To, yes, no, they have to purchase a ticket. They have to purchase a ticket. It'll be $25 a ticket, which is the same that we charged for the wine walk. And where do the proceeds of that go to? Well, it's going to the downtown event. It'll help pay for advertising and the beer, because we obviously have to purchase that. Sure. Um, but yeah, it'll go towards that event. Okay. Okay, awesome. Any other questions? Uh, throw one out just each one of these businesses don't have to have a bartender's license. <laughs> the hand are, when you sell that counts as they do um, receive a temporary bartender's license, but they do not have to do the schooling and all of that. So background check and it's very specific to those three hours of time, Dave. And then the request is also, once this is over, to be able to have a picnic license down in the park. Right. Correct. Um, so so, so there's two requests. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Terry, is the, the money then administered through the chamber or through the, okay. Yep, it is. So and we've kind of become the, the fiscal agent for the summer block party and all of the events okay. that we've done the last two years. So, so it never goes into our books anywhere. It's um, I think things might have been paid, a few might have been paid out of the city in the past couple of years, but okay. Okay. we will handle all of the, the beer sales. Being it has to be a nonprofit, so. Okay. <clears throat> what are you thinking? I'm thinking I like beer, but I don't think I can drink $25 worth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you come out and try. You got a long period of time to do it. <laughs> Two and a It's like a food smorgasbord. <laughs> don't, don't, forget, don't forget your pretzel necklace, too. <laughs> the other thing I should I note is that it, yeah. each location is also asked to have some type of a snack so that um, people are also eating while they're 
um, sampling the, the beer so they're not walking around on empty stomachs. So, I mean, for the wine walk, I mean, there were fabulous hors d'oeuvres. There was raw shrimp, and I mean, it was pretty nice. So. And where were the where were the food? At these vendors? Yeah, each had? each location that, including the pack a pub, has to have some type of a snack. <laughs> you didn't know that. Oh, we got plenty of pretzels and popcorn. That works. Yeah. That's all you gotta have. Yeah, but each location is to provide some type of. And a we snack. have no issues with food, though. No, right. no, okay. we don't have any issues with food. All right. Okay. I'll make a motion we approve. All right. Second. <laughs> So you're approving two things. You're approving the uh, the beer wobble and the. It's called the sud shuffle. Okay. Well, shuffle <laughs> is a good word too. <laughs> and the Rotary Riverview Park. You're also approving that, and you're okay with that. Okay. <coughs> Motion by Hackett. Second. Second by Whitman that we approve of the application for a temporary Class B retailer's picnic license from the Opaca Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, for the craft beer walk on July 28th from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. and then down in Rotary Riverview Park from noon till 11 p.m. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Everybody. We, we also just uh, realized it last week this falls on the same weekend as EAA. So we'll probably have a lot of people actually in the downtown area as well, um, staying at the hotels and everything else. It might be a good thing, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, before we go any further, if we don't get out by 7.30, it's not just because I'm running the meeting and not Paul. There's more on the agenda. <laughs> just so you know this. All right, next, uh, we got uh, resolution number 1389. This is a resolution... Adopting the City of Opaca Downtown Redevelopment and Streetscape Plan. Brennan. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. This item is on page 141. Um, <clears throat> what is in your packet is the culmination of uh, over almost 15 to 16 months worth of work with uh, staff, with our consultants, RDG Planning, Design, and, our, and SEH Engineering, along with the Downtown Steering Committee. Um, the, the draft plan that's in your packet has gone through um, many public meetings, uh, design charrettes, and is really a, a guiding document for the, the city's re redevelopment moving forward. Um, and I, and I want to reiterate that that it's you know it's a it's a guiding document. You know, plans change over time and everything else, but you know uh, the, the the ideas that are presented and the and the concepts are 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 not concrete. You know, things will change as we move forward. Um, you know, we have awarded, you know, design contracts for the next phases of the projects. But, uh, again, this is really a guiding document that will help us in the future years for planning, working with other um, groups within the community to support some of the initiatives. But it's also a guiding document for uh, the city staff on some of the changes that may be needed, you know, whether it's ordinances or um, other initiatives. Uh, this, uh, the downtown master plan did go through, um, uh, in April, there was kind of a draft unveiling uh, to the, the Common Council the same night that we actually did kind of the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting. It has gone through the Steering Committee for approval and was brought forward to the Planning Commission a couple of weeks ago for cons uh, for consideration. We have held it out there for public comment, and those changes have been adopted into the document as well. Um, so this evening, we are, I am asking that uh, the Resolution 1389 be approved. Um, and then we start uh, moving forward with this downtown plan. And as uh, Brennan has said, we did uh, discuss this uh, a little bit more length at the City Planning Commission meeting. Uh, but again, just look at this as a guideline to what we uh, would like to see happen. And, and it, uh, it was done in pencil, so we can erase it if we need to to uh, make it work uh, as, as the future goes. And, and, and as I said before, this plan does include the preferred option that was approved by the DOT. And I have to, again, credit RDG and SEH for guidance through that process uh, over six, almost eight months to get us through. But um, I believe, you know, this is a, a document that 
uh, has the public support. Uh, the businesses uh, hopefully are excited and happy to see that angle parking will be maintained in the downtown, and um, we'll be able to get uh, get our arms around this and moving forward here. So, all right. So again, we're just looking for you to approve this resolution so we can put this on file. Need a motion. I move we approve resolution number 1389. Second. Motion uh, by Fair, second by Keelan, that we approve resolutions number 1389-2017. It's a resolution adopting the City of Opaca Downtown rede Redevelopment and Streetscape Plan. Any further discussion? Mayor, I think that it, it was an awesome presentation. It was really nice to be able to sit and read it. Um, and I actually had Sandy run it off so I could read it again and highlight areas. It, it was very thorough. I thought you really went into each um, activity very well. Thank you very much. Great. Awesome. Again, this is a resolution, so we'll need a roll call vote. Sandy. Lori Chestnut. Aye. Scott Prochatsky. Aye. Eric Olson. Aye. Mary Fair. Aye. Paul Mayo. Aye. Dave Peterson. Aye. Chuck Whitman. Aye. Alan Keeland. Aye. And Steve Hackett. Aye. Nine ayes. Motion carried. Thanks, Brennan. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a request uh, from Wolpac Online and Josh and Henry uh, to do maybe some expansion of uh, Wolpac Online. Josh. Okay. Well, some background on this. Um, Wolpac County has put together a team of staff over there, Andy Carlin, Ryan Brown, and Dave Teal, who have been studying broadband throughout the county internet access. And um, I think they've been doing that for a good year, year and a half, that they've been looking at that, where there's lack of internet, where it's done well, and where the holes and gaps are. And they've reached out to a number of different internet providers in the county, trying to maybe partner with someone or trying to get some of these providers to expand into areas in the county where there's lack of or no internet. And most of the provider, all the providers they talk to do not have an interest in expanding their footprint. They're content where they are. They may upgrade the service they're doing in their current service areas, but none of the other providers are willing to go into the areas that have a lack of Internet. And they reached out to WAPAC online about two months ago, and we've been going back and forth discussing with the county what WAPAC online might be able to offer in portions Josh, of the county. Josh, can I interrupt you just real quick? Do you remember that this is the an additional uh, PDF file that was sent to you. Oh, yeah. So it's not in your regular packet if you're looking for that. You maybe all knew that, but I had forgotten it. Um, so they've been discussing with us what we might be able to do to fill some of these gaps in areas of the county. And Ralph and I have been doing some different research, driving around, seeing what parts of the county um, have good geography to do fixed wireless and what areas we wouldn't be able to do work in. And the county's been... Uh, very willing to allow us access, potential access to some different county resources such as land, potential tower space, maybe access to some of their fiber down the road, all in uh, all to help aid internet expansion throughout the county. And I think the county is willing to work with any provider, whether it's WAPAC online or another provider. It's just what they've been finding from these other providers is they don't have an interest in spending the money to expand their footprint and the nice thing about wireless is it can be done pretty quick and pretty inexpensive compared to the tens of thousands of dollars per mile it costs to run new line um, so we've been discussing that with the county and with good timing um, state of Wisconsin has opened up another window for our public service commission broadband expansion grant that's due at the end of the month and that's what we're asking for permission for tonight is to go ahead and apply for this grant um, in preparation for this, you know, I've taken a pretty close look at what our budget numbers are. We just got the audit back and what pack online. And after a couple of years of, you know, just being kind of in poor shape with the AT&T thing and some other situations, we've rebounded nicely. And as of the end of last year, per the audit, we've got about sixty-two thousand dollars in cash available. And if this year keeps going as it is, you know, at least fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars profit this year that will add to that. So we are in a good situation to invest some money to help out other people in the county to get better internet access out there. And then this additional uh, 
packet you have, page 22 and 23, kind of shows the areas we'd be looking to expand into. And these are all areas where the geography is pretty good. These are areas that either the county staff or my staff I have identified as kind of having lack of good internet. There are some areas in here where there's no internet. There are some areas where there's just one provider. Um, so this kind of shows the area we'd be looking to get into. Some of these are county-owned towers. Some of these are potential future locations. And uh, in this grant application, we're proposing to erect two new towers. One would be at the county process and transfer facility, which actually turns out to be a really ideal location to relay to other portions of the county. And uh, I attended a Bear Creek town board meeting last week, and they are open to discussing possibly locating a tower on the town hall property. And if not, there, you know, I'm sure we can find a private landowner in that area that really wants better internet to work with. Um, this project, I'm still waiting for a few numbers and some few details to actually finalize this application, but it's looking to be around a $70,000 project. Um, and the funding would come from three sources. About 40% would come from the grant, 40% would come from our reserves, and about 10% would come from user fees, from setup fees for new internet service. Um, There's not much more I can explain. You know, if you just look at the maps on 23, 24, that really gives you a good overview of you know, the areas we're looking to potentially expand into through this project. And the other comment I'll make, even if we don't get this grant, we're still very willing to work with the county to do what we can with our own resources. It might move slower. It might not be as big of a footprint. But we're looking to do some sort of expansion because that's part of what we're here for. That's why WPAC Online was created, was to get into these areas that the other providers um, do not have an interest in going in. So I could keep going into detail on this grant bank that kind of covers, if you're looking at that map, I think it gives you a good overview. So I don't know if there's any questions anyone has about this. Josh, I'd just like a little clarification. You said 40% from us 40% from the grant and 10% from? Oh, 45% from those two and then 10%. Okay, now I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Josh, touch a little bit on how you think this will actually help our current customers, too. Well, there'll be a couple things that'll happen. Um, as we start adding more customers, we're going to have to purchase more bandwidth, so that's going to be more speed potentially available to our customers as we have more revenue coming, you know, there'll be well, the additional revenue coming in to cover that cost and we'll need more bandwidth to support more customers. Um, the other thing we're looking at is a little more redundancy on the system. Um, if we're going to expand like this, one thing, probably our weakest thing is we don't have a backup internet connection. So if something happens to this building, we're out of luck. And one of the things I'm pushing for if we start growing is we need to get a backup internet connection off site somewhere. So we're looking at some things to build into the system that just make it a little stronger, um, a little bit better. There'll be a couple links that our current customers are on that would be upgraded as part of this to get the additional capacity um, to these other locations. Is, is the county fiber one of those uh, opportunities for redundancy? It very well could be. I think the fiber, if we end up going down that route, would be replacing a wireless link um, that would get more bandwidth out a little more reliably than a wireless link. Um, one of the links we're looking at actually testing out pretty soon here is going from Wapaka to Marion, which is about a 22-mile distance that we'll be trying out probably sometime this summer to see if we can get up to that area. That's one area I know the county wants to focus on. I think it's important to know, too, though, that what, what city staff is asking you to do here is just allow them to apply for this grant uh, they'll need to be if we do receive the grant when we receive the grant there will be more discussion when we come back because for it to make it feasible for us there are a number of other things that need to happen we have to find pretty inexpensive places to put towers up and and uh, so that we can get access throughout the whole county and stuff I mean that's just one of the examples so again 
He's just asking, or they're just asking tonight to apply for the grant, and then we can decide later whether we want to really accept the grant or, or whether it, it does make sense to move forward. And I have asked Josh, and I'm not sure I didn't, uh, to uh, check with Kathy to make sure that uh, the budgeted, uh, your future budget uh, does meet uh, uh, with, uh, it's possible for it to work? It is possible. Right okay. now, um, we're doing really well on collections of the um, internet um, per, uh, customers because we've uh, added it on to the same bill as the water utility for those joint customers and that has helped in, in collection so um, I don't have any problems with um, this type of expense out there okay any other questions <coughs> so again if you are okay with this you're just uh, allowing Josh to go forward with applying for this uh, grant I'll move that we approve uh, WAPACA online applying for the State of Wisconsin Public Service Commission Broadband Expansion Grant. Motion by motion by Keel and second by Hackett that we move forward with the grant application. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Thank you, Josh. That Thanks. Was good. All right, uh, Henry's up, uh, and this has to do with uh, uh, the taxi. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to ask that you please table this. I got caught uh, in the middle of some miscommunication. Um, the DOT has closed the process to uh, purchase vehicles through this cycle. The vendor uh, seemed to indicate I could still uh, purchase. And I'm told that they're in the midst of rebidding vehicles for this next year. So um, by the end of summer, I'll be back. Uh, my guess is, is that base vehicle will probably uh, come up a little bit, but we'll see. Uh, it would still be a rear load accessible van. Uh, this is what most systems are going to. But anyways, no action requests for tonight. I apologize for we are asking, though, that you make a motion to uh, table this uh, until a future meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Second. Motion by Olson, second by Peterson, that uh, we uh, table the request uh, for this van until a future meeting. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Henry, you're still up. Yes. Wapak area triathlon street closures. Uh, this is uh, uh, the same request as you've seen in past years, and uh, I failed to put the, uh, the times here. Uh, the closures, just for, um, uh, from your, you won't remember probably from last year, but on Friday night for the kids' try, we would close South Main uh, from South Park. <laughs> Uh, to Badger Street from 5.45 uh, p.m. to 7 p.m. And then on Saturday morning from 6.30 a.m. to about 11 a.m. we would close uh, South Main uh, from South Park to Lake Street. Lake Street um, from South Main intersection to Berlin and Berlin Street from Lake Street intersection south to Park Avenue. And then uh, right before about 7, uh, we close Washington Street from Badger to Lakeside Parkway. So those are the closures. They're the same closures as we uh, have uh, requested and you've approved in, in the past. Um, Justin did mention that uh, the Lake Street project will uh, be after the triathlon, so I think that gave a, a lot of people a lot of uh, comfort to know that that wasn't uh, a poss possible conflict, so. Henry, do you want to touch on uh, some of the changes that are happening in the triathlon as long as you go? Oh, sure. Um, our numbers come down a little bit. You know, this is like the 15th year that we've done it, 15th or 16th year. And uh, we were right up around 1,000 participants a couple of years ago, and it's dwindled down. I think last year we were down to maybe 800 total. That's with the 
um, with the relay teams. Uh, I think some of that is, is just there's more events. So we have heard through the years that the swim seems to be kind of the intimidating piece of this. So for new this year, we've instituted uh, a paddle board and or kayak in lieu of the swim. And we've got it, got it figured out. Um, so that wave will be the very last wave that will be in the water. And we do have people signed up. Uh, we actually also implemented a fat tire um, uh, category um, as of our last meeting a couple weeks ago. Nobody signed up for that. I guess maybe fat tires aren't so good on the road course. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I think the, uh, the paddleboard and the kayak has been so somewhat well received. Um, so that's an option to do the paddleboard? You can still in lieu swim of the if swim. you wanted to. In lieu okay. of the swim. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I think uh, we're, we're changing a little bit of our advertising. This new this year, we advertised in a uh, publication that went out in the valley, centered around young people, kids, uh, in hopes of building our, um, uh, our exposure for the kids triathlon, but also adults. <coughs> Because before our marketing was always targeted sort of to triathletes and bicyclists and stuff. And so this was more just a generic kids activities book. And, and, and we've gotten quite a few inquiries from that. And so that was a, a change we did. So um, we're going to be watching our numbers. Uh, <coughs> I don't want to say um, that it's irrelevant anymore. But, you know, we're, we're maturing a little bit. And you've got to always kind of keep changing to keep interest up. Great. That's the big change. All right. Uh, <coughs> going back then for what uh, the request was is that uh, the, uh, the street closures which are in your packet uh, would be for Friday night, uh, August 18th and Saturday, August 19th. So moved. Motion by Hackett. Second. So by Keelan, that we approve of the requested uh, street closures for the Opaca Area Triathlon on Friday night, August 18th, and Saturday, August 19, 2017. Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion <coughs> carried. License report uh, number 1368. This is uh, operators or bartenders. License, you usually see a lot more, uh, you know, during the June and July month uh, because of the renewal is, renewal is actually July 1st. Um, so you have a list of them on there. These, of course, are all pending uh, that uh, background checks and that payments of any fines are owed to the city are paid up. Uh, otherwise, they will not receive their license until those are taken care of. So we'd need a motion to approve license report number 1368. So moved. Second. Motion by Whitman, second by Chestnut, that we approve license report number 1368. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. We have a scrap dealer's <coughs> license request, uh, D4... Metals, uh, this is Wesley Deschler, um, and uh, this says pending uh, Brennan, uh, your department. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> last council meeting, I think, I believe there was five or six scrap dealer licenses that were approved. Uh, this one must have been uh, a late arrival coming into the city. Um, I'll be doing those checks either at the end of this week or early next week before the signature at the end of the month. But um, I believe D4 is out of town here, so there's there would not be anything to actually physically check. Okay. And so we're going to make this pending uh, approval by the uh, Community and Economic Development Department. Correct. Okay. We need a motion. Second. Motion by Peterson, second by Olson, that we approve license report number 1369 uh, pending in approval by the Community and Economic Development Department. Any discussion? Question. Yeah, go ahead. So this business is not in the city. 
So I guess I don't understand. Doesn't the county deal with these licenses? I don't. I don't understand. No, the over the last, I believe it was last year that we actually made the change. We have several scrap dealers that are within the city, uh, mainly out in our industrial park that um, have physical locations here. So that's why we went to a two-tier system. Um, so I actually, all the scrap dealers out in the industrial park have special use permits. So I have to make sure that they're abide, abiding by their special use requirements on a yearly basis. And then we also have a scrap dealer's license for uh, businesses or companies that are located outside the city but do business within the city. Um, so they're actually traveling through. Um, so that's why it's a lesser amount. So D4 is one of those individuals that does not have a physical location here within the city but still does business at several locations throughout the within the city limits okay he's got a big old pickup truck and a trailer okay. that's what he's telling you yeah <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. i don't know that either but uh, that's my <laughs> guess yeah all right uh, did we vote no okay ready to vote all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. against <coughs> motion carried all right, uh, we move on to Kathy. This is dealing with our insurance. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my report is on page 72, uh, and this is in regards to the renewal for the city's liability, property, contractors' equipment, workers' compensation, and crime insurance policies. Um, we currently have our liability insurance through uh, the local, the League of Wisconsin Municipalities Mutual Insurance Fund. Uh, our property insurance is with uh, Chubb. Um, our workers' compensation is uh, through United Heartland, and our crime is with uh, Liberty Mutual. At this time, our underground storage at the airport with Ace American is not up for renewal. Um, but uh, I did get um, some um, bids in from um, Chubb for the property insurance because of the new. Uh, insurance mutual insurance company that was created because of the defunding of the local government property insurance fund by the state um, there was the creation by um, our liability insurance company and two other municipal mutual insurance companies to replace that fund uh, with it's called MPAC which is the municipal public in um, property municipal property insurance company company um, one of the things that uh, it it does is it provides coverage that was similar to the local government property insurance fund uh, but some increases uh, it is just for cities and villages it does not include um, counties school districts sewage districts like the other fund uh, did um, it does have uh, reinsurance uh, um, levels on there. Uh, and so when I did get a quote uh, from them for the property insurance, it came to 50469 uh, Today I did receive um, my quote from Chubb, and they are giving us a 3% uh, decrease in our policy uh, with um, coverage and uh, that would amount as of savings of one thousand six hundred and ninety six dollars um, our liability insurance with the league will be going up by about three hundred and thirty five dollars our auto physical damage is down by six hundred by nine hundred and sixty nine dollars on the quote um, probably because we have not had um, as many accidents with our vehicles and we are replacing them. Our workers comp uh, mod uh, has uh, reduced, our mod is like 78%. Um, so our premium is uh, down by 2,529 for renewal. Um, I'm hoping to keep that. Um, and our crime policy would be a 0% increase from Liberty Mutual, uh, and we would add uh, the social engineering fraud uh, coverage for $257. Um, if I we stayed at, with 
pretty much everything that we have right now. We'd have a premium savings um, for the next year of $4,602. So um, I did say that uh, we would look at um, maybe looking at the traveler's um, crime policy, but I'm, I'm kind of going to say that I really happen to like the coverage that I'm going to get from Liberty Mutual for um, the same amount of money. Um, so, uh, and the property insurance, I, I didn't have a recommendation because I was waiting for the Chubb renewal and I prefer to stay with Chubb. Um, I, I, this uh, new mutual insurance company is only two years old. Um, I haven't heard anything about how their claims processes are. Um, I'm also looking at it as far as a diversification of our, our coverage. Um, we're in a, mu uh, a, a mutual insurance fund for liability um, right now with a just somebody who does with municipalities to get into the property insurance again. Um, I'm afraid that it, it's there's not enough diversification in it for for policy coverage. If I have uh, an issue with maybe flooding in southeastern Wisconsin, that you have a lot of municipalities in in this new MPEC fund, we could run into the same thing that the local government property insurance fund had, and end up having higher premiums because all of a sudden you have a lot of claims in that same group. Whereas Chubb is uh, um, a private uh, company and we would ha they're in a lot of different things so then there's more diversification so um, I'm going to recommend tonight that we um, stay with the league for liability insurance uh, stay with Chubb for the property insurance and contractors equipment stay with uh, the renewal for United Heartland and uh, stay with Liberty Mutual and add the social engineering fraud, and I did provide you information regarding that. Um, we do have, and that's probably why our um, renewal and, and adding the um, um, social engineering fraud is, is so cheap, is that we do have excellent internal controls uh, in my office as far as uh, um, uh, wire transfers. Uh, we have dual authorizations. <laughs> Uh, we did remove all of the internal control um, um, remarks from our audit. Uh, our auditors are very pleased with that, and so um, that's probably why we're doing really good with our crime uh, and um, and can go with the um, social engineering fraud. So and that's through through Liberty Mutual also instead through of Liberty. instead of Travelers. Yes. Okay. Okay, and you said the underground storage uh, for the is, airport. We did. I did not get a, a renewal on that yet. I believe that comes in August. Okay. So, um, but okay. this this would be um, what I would be recommending. Okay, and you're estimating the total cost, including workers' cost, to be comp. I'm sorry, to be a hundred and two thousand five hundred and fifty-eight dollars. Uh, I didn't add it up, but. Oh, well, what's on page 278? Um, that... The liability insurance, no. Oh, those two, are just different. Because that, that, yeah. that's the proposal from the league that included the traveler's crime. Um, I'm at the uh, auto physical damage uh, and um, the liability piece is uh, 100873 That includes the workers' comp. Uh, Chubb is coming in at... Uh, shoot. Uh, That's okay. Yeah. But it, it, like I said, it's a savings of 4602 I was more worried about the savings than I was with the original contract amounts. Well, okay. It looks like, well, I guess we can't even do that. All right. So we can, if, if you're okay with that, Council, we'd be looking for an approval of, of uh, going with these this insurance quote uh, for 2017 through June 30th, 2018, um, at a savings of $4,602. I'll make that motion. Motion by Keelan. 
Second. Second by Hackett that we approve uh, Kathy going forward with uh, uh, entering into an agreement with the league uh, for liability insurance for Chubb for property and contractor equipment insurance, uh, United Heartland, uh, which is also the league workers comp, and then crime and social engineering fraud with Liberty Mutual at a savings of $4,602 over last year's premiums. Any discussion? Uh, Sandy O'Color roll. Steve Hackett. Aye. Paul Neal. Aye. Chuck Whitman. Aye. Mary Fair. Aye. Dave Peterson. Aye. Alan Keeland. Aye. Eric Olson. Aye. Lori Chestnut. Aye. And Scott Prochatsky. Aye. Nine eyes, motion carried. Thank you, Kathy. Nice job. All right, uh, you want to take a break before we go into closed session, or you, you want to just move right along? Take a little break. All right, let's uh, stand at recess for five minutes here. We'll, we'll be back at uh, quarter two.